Hello once again everybody, welcome back to Satisfactory. So in this episode we're going to be unlocking a few of the milestones now that we've started to produce some of the aluminium items. So the first on the list is the Logistics Mark 5. I've got all the things I need here. Uh, plenty of those. Plenty of those. <laughs> I hate it when they reorganise themselves. <laughs> and there we go. Mark 5 done. Pod's going to return in a minute. Belts and lifts can now be constructed. So yes, that's Mark 5 conveyor belt. So that might come in useful a little bit later. So the next thing we need to do is think about which one of these we want to do. I think we'll leave Tier 8 for now. Fix-it blueprints we can leave for now. Particle enrichment. Yeah, we're nowhere near being able to do any of that. <laughs> We need all sorts of things to unlock that one. Uh, that gives us the turbo motor, which we'll need for the particle enrichment. That one will give us the fuse module frame cooling system, things like that. We are in a position where we could almost uh, make, could almost unlock that one. Um, we're not doing supercomputers yet. Where do we get supercomputers? It's probably down here somewhere, isn't it? Aeronautical engineering? Yes, there it is. So this is going to be our next one, I think. Hover pack, I'm not really interested in. Um, not really interested in, the, in any of these. I'll probably only do it just to clear the board, basically. Same with the hazmat suit. I don't really need it. But i um, going to deal with that. So now that we've unlocked Logistics Mark 5, we've got Fast Logistics Mark 5, which, as you can see, is 10 times the resources. So we'll come back and do that a bit later. So I think aeronautical engineering is going to be our next milestone. It will give us drones, which we don't really use. It, we definitely need the assembly director system and the supercomputer for um, later unlocks. Uh, but we definitely need that one. So we'll select that one. But we need to make these radio control units. We haven't built something for that yet. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Over here, you'll notice we've got a bit of hypertube network coming on. Um, I built it, I tried it, it's a bit slow, it's a bit slow compared to trains, it's a bit slow compared to flying, I'll just get this train wall, no I won't, <laughs> I won't be able to catch that, never mind, um, <clears throat> it's a bit slower than trains, it's a bit slower than flying, the way I am now, and the only advantage is that I can just hop in that end and leave it and I'll, I'll appear at the other end at some point in the future I don't have to like steer or keep my hand pressed on a button or anything so that's the only real advantage so anyway <clears throat> as you'll have noticed from that train uh, we've expanded our train station somewhat um, we've got this in place this is all being fed um, this is all being fed very nicely from a series of belts underneath which we'll have a look at in a moment we've got another one here as well because for the radio control unit we need two more items and so we'd need an extra train anyway now have a quick look underneath you see this is all very all very orderly all very orderly they just all come together under here and straight through the wall So we're not using anywhere near as much coal or copper ingots as we think we do. But we use a ton of silica. A ton of silica, even when it's being um <laughs> even when it's being recycled. Um Yeah, it's getting conveyor belts through the slanted wall is a bit of a problem. You're just gonna have to clip it. There's no other real way of doing it. It's starting to get a little bit complicated down here now. Um, but it's it's not too bad really so what we'll need for the radio control units I'll just tap the recipe into this manufacturer here see radio control units that's the one thing that we can make at the moment that we're not making so aluminium casing and I have set my language to British English so it is aluminium anyway um, yeah so the 40 of those per minute that's a really weird it's a really weird time 
for producing stuff, isn't it? <laughs> 48 seconds. So anyway, 40 per minute of those. We're fine. We're fine with that. We can meet that. 1.25 and 1.25 per minute of crystal oscillators and computers. That's almost none. <laughs> but we still need we still need to feed them in. So we'll do that now. We'll feed that onto our second train. And we'll see how we go. So I haven't really done anything about um, figuring out um, capacities and balancing and things for this one. All I know is it's going to be a flaw. But given that these use so few of these, it's really not going to be a huge problem. The second train, of course, is here, ready and waiting to go. We haven't done these yet because we haven't needed to. Let's see. No, I... I can't do fast conveyor belt 5. Of course not. I haven't unlocked it yet. Ah. Anyway, those are the computers going in there. There's not very many of them. It will, uh... Oh, we're getting quite a few computers. Quite a few computers. Anyway, it's going to auto-save in a minute, so, um... Have a look at the train menu. This is Outpost 2. And we're currently at Outpost Dispatch 2. So, there we are. There's our other train, Outpost 1, coming in. Um, so, we will need to turn on self-driving, but not before we've loaded. So we'll run the loading process. Just take what we've got. Doesn't really matter. And then once that's loaded, we'll... We'll activate the self-driving. By the end, by then the other train is probably going to be here already. There it is. Yeah. See, we're not using much of those two things, but we're using silica. We're using quite a bit of sili silica. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm hiccuping. So let's turn on the self-driving and get out of here. Oh, and now it's decided to dock again. Really? I thought you said the next station was import too. If I'd have known you were going to do this, I would have dealt with it. Ah, <laughs> oh, for the love of God. We've just done all that. Just go. Maybe I should have driven it forwards a bit manually before I activated it. Anyway. So what I found while testing these out is that if Outpost 2, if the Outpost 2 train is slightly ahead of Outpost 1, Outpost 1 will never be able to catch it up or overtake it. But if it's the other way around, it will. <laughs> yeah, it's quite strange. But anyway, our, um, our route along here is now fully supported. Uh, the train station at the other end isn't. But uh, that's a story for another day. Can't really see. I, I really wish you you could um, pull the camera away from the train a bit here. You can kind of activate photo mode and do this. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we're all supported down there. We've got the hypertube running. All supported along here, all the way out to this see over here. So you'll see we've got the two import stations on the right and we've got the export station on the left now. There we go. Very nice. Into import too. So it's just going to be these two stations now. Just hook up those conveyor belts. These aren't hooked up to anything else yet, but they will just take the resources off the train. And here's him, Outpost 1. <laughs> oh, look at this. All running very nicely. The signal's all set up and everything. So yeah, it's a bit of a weird junction, this. Um, just because um, that train station's facing the other way. 
It makes everything look nice and symmetrical that way, so I'm not all that bothered about it. Anyway, over here we are running very nicely indeed. If I have a quick look down here. All the stuff's down here. It's all moving. All signs of industry and progress. <laughs> Production. Anyway. These have these have been running very nicely. Um, they're a little bit low on the on the ingots. You see, they're coming in fine this side, but there's not really enough to feed everything right now. But that's the way these things are designed. Um, anyway, what we've got over here is we've got another um, template manufacturer, but we've got lots of space over here for our own manufacturer. And I've run out of iron plates, haven't I? I've just noticed that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll be back in a minute once I've got some more iron plates. Okay, and I'm back. Didn't take all that long, really. Um, yeah, basically it was all those, all those conveyor belts I was building earlier used a lot more iron plates than I was expecting. Anyway, let's get our manufacturer built. So we've got to get this in just the right place. As always, that looks fine to me. Click it, wait for a very long time then. I could have moved it back an extra foundation, but um, I only did it like that over there because we had the extra um, pipe work to accommodate. If we just punch a hole in the floor, we can get down and deal with the power situation. So the power situation around here is decidedly non-standard. Remember, this is our normal power hookup. <laughs> We're just going to have to go straight through and hook onto that one, basically, aren't we? That wouldn't be too bad, or would that be confusing? Ah, that would be confusing. So if I just go to the middle of this part, this uh, foundation and just go from there. I'm just going to have to redo all of this. That's no problem. There. There we go. All powered up. So we need... Oh, we're going to have to get them over from all the way over there, aren't we? So we need the casings, so that comes from here. Thankfully, just uh, whip them out. Whip them out from here and we're done. <laughs> that can come all the way down here. I'm in line that way, are we? Right, so there. Back. Two clicks. And then we're in. Ha ha ha. So now it's just the stuff we've uh, just imported. And there we are. That's that hooked up. Those can... <laughs> we need to wait for our next train before we get some more of those. This is, of course, relatively empty. Oh, look. Are we out of silica? Yes, we are. We're already out of silica. Got plenty of computers. But we are out of silica. See, the problem is, with silica, I don't want to swamp it. That's... Where is that going? Oh, that was going back into the station. Oh, dearie me. Right, anyway, there we go. So, we've got a fair amount in here. Obviously, we've got none in there right now, apart from the stuff we've just put in. Um, the problem with silica is I don't want to feed too much in because it could block. But I get the feeling that we're not producing enough silica. Let's turn everything on over here and actually get things running. There we go. So... 
for the milestone of aeronautical engineering, I've easily got 300 motors kicking around. The two aluminium pieces, the casings and the alclad plates, I've got plenty of those. I just need 50 of these radio control units. Are we running? Why won't we be running? I mean, I've got... Are we not connected to power here? Why are we not connected to power? We should be. But we are not. Okay, so the power issues were the line between there and there, which apparently was connected, but wasn't. So, yeah. Anyway, everything's up and running again, as you can see. Everything's all green. This is green. Stuff is actually flowing in here now. And so, well, at least these two back here are running. So that'd be 2.5 per minute from here. 2.5 per minute from here. So we've got a few casings. We've got crystal oscillators. The problem are the casings. It's because we've got plenty of we've got plenty of those two. We just need more casings. And that is something that should be um, dealt with now that we've got more power going. Not particularly quickly, but um, certainly not slow. So things aren't looking too bad. Not looking too bad at all. We've got plenty of stuff. Got plenty of stuff coming in. <laughs> Eventually these will all get full and it will start overflowing, but still, that might take a little while. So each one of these manufacturers makes two and a half per minute. We only need 50, so that's not a huge amount. At least we've got three running now. There we go. Might take a while before it goes into another cycle, but still. Still, there we go, we've got four running. So that is shouldn't take too long to produce 50. So the manual feed on these things has definitely come in handy. I had plenty of those in storage somewhere else, so I'm just dumping them in. <laughs> so we should have... Oh yeah, we do, we do. Hang on. We've got a ton of them coming in now. A ton of them. Yeah, we're not going to be... Uh, we're not going to be hanging around too long now, are we? But that is indeed why I made the, the manual input very handy. So I've, I've checked these manufacturers. They all have quite a few of the other resources required. See, uh, I mean, we've got so many computers, they're all backed up anyway. I've got seven. So that can do at least seven cycles of these. So all of these will be coming online very shortly. That one is. That one is. It's just these two here. Which is kind of strange that these two in the middle don't have enough. There we go. They're all on. They're all on. They're all filling up with stuff. That one's getting there for the next cycle. There we go. Manual input allows you to just dump in a load of stuff. So yeah, they're coming down there pretty quickly. That's quite a few of them. <laughs> yes, lots. Lots and lots and lots. Okay, there we go. We've got the 50. And, uh, and they keep coming. So let's have a quick look at our our list here. So we've got a hundred there. That's all fine. Um, we haven't got any of the casings because I just dumped them in. Um, yeah, we're going to have to fly back and pick up some motors, but that going to have to fly back anyway. So just make sure we've got two hundred casings on board, and we should be go to good to go for the aeronautical engineering milestone. The question is, what happens next?
Right, there's 200. Just grab. Uh, got no trains in the station ready to go. We'll just fly over. It still amazes me just how big this factory is whenever I come over and have a look at it again. Oh, man. <laughs> ah. So anyway, let's uh, let's get these motors. Do we have them in my storage? See, the problem I'm having with my storage is that I have to manually feed it. Uh, oh, we've got loads of motors. Loads and loads and loads of motors. Is that going to be enough? No, one more. Might as well take one more. Right, we should have enough now. Yeah, the only problem with that storage is that you have to manually put things in. <laughs> right, so there's 50 of those, 100 of those, 200 of those, and 300 of those. Aeronautical engineering Milestone unlocked. Reached. Aerial transport of resources is now possible with the use of drones, ideal for shipping across long distances or difficult terrain. Ensure the presence of batteries at drone ports for optimal results. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. So yes, it's the project part that we've really been after. Um, not necessarily drones, because I've not really seen the point of those. You've got to make batteries, and that's a whole, a whole process <laughs> to make batteries, just to power the drones. It's kind of annoying. And yes... Um, the pod's going to return in like 14 and a half minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should have a little look and see what our next milestone ought to be. Not necessarily the hazmat suit, not necessarily hover pack, fast logistics, or the fix it blueprints. Um, we. I think we've unlocked supercomputers now, haven't we? I think that's what we did with aeronautical engineering. Yes, we unlocked supercomputers. So that's going to be probably the next thing we end up making. No idea what we need for those. Um, nuclear power will need supercomputers to unlock. That gives the magnetic field generator, which is what we need. Advanced aluminium production. We could unlock that. We are in a position to unlock that. We've probably got enough stuff there. That gives us the resource well pressurizer and the extractors. Gives us access to the nitrogen gas and then lets us make heat sinks, cooling systems, and fuse modular frames. So that's quite a big quite a big thing that. That then, fuse modular frames. Gives us the turbo motor, the Mark III minor, which would be very useful, and the thermal production propulsion rocket, which we'll need for this. And then particle arrangement, which we'll need for that one. So pretty much all of these. Pretty much all of these are necessary. So uh, yeah, we shall see. We just need to get supercomputers built. So that's going to be our next challenge. So thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed that, remember to subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.